I pretend I'm talking to myself. Oh. Like I said, I sure, I sure love giving them treats. Yeah. And they, isn't that something I'm how? Yeah. Is it, they get listening. It's oh the sure, the dogs, they, they care. There we go. I think the camera's pointing at us. Anyway, um, what I did is I put the. There was lots of pork drippings in this pan from cooking their pork chops. And that was $20 worth of meat they ate this morning. But uh, how I use that is I just um, put couscous in there right away. The whole wheat couscous. And so um, I soaked it all up nicely. So they're going to eat this later on today for supper with their the rest of their other food. Got so, right now. Yeah, they're going to love it. Because it tastes just like the pork. Yeah. <laughs> so 20 bucks worth of pork for a million bucks worth of dog. Yeah. Because Except when they poop inside. They're yeah, that's not bucks. very nice yeah. when they do that to me. But anyway, I guess I'll read more about this while you're eating your dinner. Oh, and um, it's just yam under there. That's past oh, yeah. Time. You did grab uh, that yam. Yeah. Yes, or sweet or, potato yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for that. I think they're healthier than potatoes. Yeah. I think you have potatoes if they're cooked in their skin. Well, there's potatoes there too. Well, it's good. Yep. Best so of both worlds. Both here. I'm loving it. Anyway, um, so my next person to talk about is Jeffrey M. Smith, Las Vegas, Nevada. GMOs founded Institute for Responsible Technology, nongmo.com. Um, GMO cross pollinate, uh, self propagating pollution of the gene pool. Nine GM crops, herbicide tolerance, R up pesticide production. Uh, BT harms insects that eats it. BT toxin linked to inflammation, imp immune problems, and tissue damage in mice. It has now been found to poke holes in human cells, so it may create leaky gut. It also promotes immune response in humans. We may develop allergy to corn. Um, the only testing required are self-testing. So Monsanto is only required to test it themselves. Um, so company can do the tests or not, and they do the test for 90 days. Uh, Cirillini expanded a uh, test that had been done for 90 days to two years and found significant changes, signs of toxicity in the rats. Just after 90 days, a rat started getting tumors uh, on the Roundup sprayed feed. But he also tested, he, um, he tested a group of rats on um, unsprayed Roundup Ready corn and he found two, two tumors in them too. So. Um, it's not the Roundup uh, necessarily, or just the Roundup, it's the fact that it's genetically modified. I have to take this off because it's way too hot for this. I suspect she's the one who left that car. Liver, kidney, and pituitary damage were also noted. There's something in the Roundup Ready corn which promotes tumor growth on its own. Roundup has been found to decrease good back, gut, back, gut bacteria, which causes an increase in production of bad gut bacteria. This overgrowth of bad bacteria is linked to certain cancers, colorectal cancer, for example. Um, this bad bacteria produces zonulin, which causes leaky gut, gaps in cell walls and intestines, and leaky gut is linked to cancer. Roundup damages CYP enzymes, part of detox process. CYP damage linked to cancer. CYP helps liver detox from chemo. Roundup chelates and binds with zinc so it can't be metabolized. Zinc deficiency linked to certain cancers. Roundup promotes breast cell growth in parts per trillion. Promotes inflammation in gut, which is linked to cancer. Roundup accumulates in thyroid, liver, and kidney. And we're seeing a rise in these cancers. 
Roundup used for ripening anger, agent in sugarcane, molasses and wheat, barley, rye, sweet potatoes, potatoes, citrus groves, beans, lentils, berries, dot, dot, dot. And you were saying it was also used for drying, right? Well, that's it. That's the yeah. same thing. But, you that's know, crazy. I hadn't believed kind of it. When I'd read about that, I thought, oh, you know, it's just the... Um, the green sort of people are just getting a little bit carried away or whatever right but anyway things like and then, when you apply it you're supposed to use a mask you don't have to that's but, like but you, you should wash the, your hands off after right at the very least well yeah I mean but the, here you're taking the it thing into, is is like if you if you think about it you could wash, like I'm wondering now about the, how I get the chickpea flour. Well, if the chickpeas have been um, sprayed with this stuff to help them ripen or dry out or whatever, and they may very well be, then if they're ground into flour, well, I certainly can't wash that off. You know, if it's the other beans, Maybe they'd be absorbing it. I bet you they would, but... You can't it, wash anything off a of flour. But you can't wash anything off a of flour. You might be able to sieve it. I don't know what you could do. You'd, you'd take a really fine sieve, right? I don't think you could. It'd be right in there, James. Anyway... I'm trying to find the best possible interpretation. <laughs> no, and they're I'm definitely just, not telling me to. Though. No, I'm, I'm really... You know, I was looking at this bread, for example, and for the longest time, I've just been like, oh, well, non-GMO, that's fine, right? And so that's non-GMO verified bread. And, um, and we like it, but I'm thinking now we, the only one that we can eat are the organic bread. It has to be organic from now on. It can't be the non-GMO because... That could have been sprayed with Roundup, the the grains, right? Yeah. I mean, anyway, um, he says you can find a list of fruit vegetables which have been approved for high levels of Roundup residue by FDA, but it's easier to just go all organic. 93% of pregnant women and 80% of their unborn fetuses also had Bt toxin in it. If it gets into blood, it damages red blood cells. Fetus do, don't have um, well-developed blood-brain barriers, so it could end up in their brains. Bt toxins, toxin washes out quickly, but this study was from Canada, and they expected the toxin came from the meat that the people had eaten, which um, the meat, I mean the livestock had eaten the Bt feedstock, right? So they were thinking it um, was transferred that way to the people, that it survived the meat, like being digested by the meat, and then it survived to be digested by the humans. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, but then he read another study or something like that. And he, this is a 2004 study on soybeans, and they stopped this study. Um, and he thinks this is, this is what's really happening. The Roundup Ready genes partially transferred into D DNA of gut bacteria. And it Three might times. be produced continually now in our guts. So now we have, through exposure, which I used to apply uh, BT corn for m mosquito control. And at the time, you know, we were told, oh, it's absolutely safe. You know, it can, the, the only things that are affected by this are the larvae, the mosquito larvae, are, and not not us, not human. So we were told we could even eat the stuff. It kind of smelled like soy sauce, but of course I did not eat it. But <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I was overly careful about it though, compared to some like Dursban or something, some of the other like insecticides that I was using at the time. Uh, because I used to apply pesticides for a living and I really wish that I hadn't now but the way I thought of it back then is I thought well I'm gonna be a lot safer about it than a lot of other people would and I mean people like 
it's really hard living living around mosquitoes all the time it's hard getting out and being active and just living a pleasant life if you're living in northern Alberta around surrounded by swamps I or you know here in uh, southern Alberta there's some scares with uh, West Nile virus and further south of course there's more and I don't know somehow I'd convince myself that well it was better me applying it because I'd be safer about it for myself and safer for other people you know than other people would be other people it's like you know that scene in um, oh what is it that movie with uh, what's his name that the handsome guy with the kind of wonky nose and the blonde hair Oh, yeah. The two two brothers and then Owen. Uh, yeah, Wilson. Owen Wilson and uh, and Zoolander. So I'm thinking of Zoolander, the scene where they're um, having the water fight at the gas station um, because they're not very smart models. And so that's you know that's the way I would think of it. But other people would be like that, but with pesticides. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to be oh, better, my God. Around, right? Yeah. So. But I wish that I hadn't cared so much about other people and had cared more about my own health. Anyway, done now. Um, so, yeah, now that they're thinking it might be produced continually in our guts. So it's quite possible that our gut bacteria are now producing BT toxin 24-7. <sighs> When people stop eating GMOs, they feel better though. Uh, gastrointestinal complaints clear up. Gut, gut bacteria normally produce tryptophan, a precursor to serotonin. Tryptophan metabolic pathways are disabled by Roundup. So when you have reduced tryptophan, you might feel more depressed. You won't feel full when you eat. It's also a precursor to melatonin, so you may have problems with sleep too. And I used to have a lot of problems with sleep, but it was... Um, it wasn't this, I don't think. Uh, it was physical pain. Yeah, it was pain. Like my grandma, she was talking about not being able to sleep, and I said, well, it's the pain, and she said, yeah. And I know it, you know. No. Um, cats and dogs taken off GMO have improved health, too. Uh, Responsibletechnology.org, they need $5 million a year. They, they're they trying to get GMOs out of the human food chain, whatever. Good luck. Yeah. KC Krejci, Orlando, Florida. His wife uh, was Miss Florida, Miss USA. She had problems um, and she was on prescription drugs. She had been on those for 20 years. Oh no, she hadn't been on them now for 20 years. Uh, changed diet to superfood nutrition, dietary essential um, nutrients uh, you must consume. Uh, body can make the non-essential. Vitamin B2 are more toxic. Methyl, methyl calbolamum is most accepted form of B12, but cyanocalamum, whatever, cyanocalamum is the form in most things on the market. Match the Krebs cycle uh, to what you're like. The Krebs cycle should recognize the nutrients that you're consuming, right? Food conversion to energy, the body recognized citrates, malates, apicutaglutarates, I don't know what I was writing, and knows what to do with it. We recognize the forms of the 50 essential dietary nutrients, but often cheaper forms are what we see available. So. One or two steps required for the body to convert nutrient to usable form. There are unknown essentials too. Nutrients combined are more usable. Vitamins taken with food, for example. 2002, four corners of optimal superfood nutrition. And he kind of got off, um, they got talking about some of those for a minute, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, calorie uh, restriction with optimal nutrition. Antioxidants are by nature an anti-glycation, caramelization on top of protein, um, and that makes them unusable, I guess. Anti-inflammatory foundation 
Foundational root of disease, oxidation, inflammation, glycation, angiogenesis, blood supply to area. And when acute, it's fine. Blood vessels will pull back and away from the area, but when chronic, it's a problem, like cancer, right? Um, cut sugar and cut glycemic response. As blood sugar rises, all cause mortality rises. A century ago, sugar was a delicacy. People are now eating their weight in sugar a year. The chance of dementia goes up. A doctor starved his own pancreatic cancer on ketogenic diet. Fish oil is anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E added. Alpha, beta, gamma, and delta tocotrienol and alpha, beta, gamma tocopherol adds uh, antioxidant protection to these oils. Estrexin then block um, air aromatase aromatase block aromatase to prevent cancer um, so he was giving an example about people who eat like a high carb meal like a pizza or something and your leukocytic index um, should should normally be around 16 or whatever and it goes down to 1.9 and holds that for hours after eating a hundred grams of carbs uh, within 15 minutes of eating that meal, the leukocytic index um, drops. So how, and that, the leukocytic index is how many bad guys a white blood cell can eat in an hour. So it goes way, your white blood cell activity just plummets after eating a high carb meal. Um, Charles Daniel, Hope for Cancer. He's from Georgia, invasive bladder cancer, 2007. He had surgery. It had 90% success rate, but they found cancer in the lymph nodes too. It turned uh, out to be only a 40% success rate, and he was going to need chemo. And then they also found three tumors in his, in his liver, and the average life expectancy now was only nine months. So it kept dropping the more they were looking. And uh, he went through with the chemo anyway because he wanted to live as long as possible. He had liver surgery oh, and tried supplements, but the cancer returned to the liver. He came to Hope for Cancer in 2008, and all of his tests and scans have showed him to be cancer free. His oncologist has never seen anyone with his type of liver cancer live that long. He felt like everyone really cared about him there at Hope for Cancer. Hope for Cancer has a strong home program, so he continued a lot of therapies he'd learned there at home. And that's what he really liked about their program. Uh, David Olson, Hoxie Center. Uh, 13 doctors didn't know he had cancer. Then they told him it was cancer that it'd be easy to treat, but then they looked further into it and they told him it'd be tough to treat. He had cancer everywhere and a tumor the size of a volleyball in his stomach. They took so many tests and he had cancer in the bone and was told he'd probably last three days with treatment. He rushed down to Hoxie. He'd known people who'd went down to Hoxie, so that's where he went. And Oxycontin con con didn't help the pain, he said, at all. It was like uh, sugar pills. Eight months from the treatment, they couldn't find the cancer. He still takes the Hoxytonic since there's no side effects for the Hoxytonic. He takes um, 80 vitamins a day. He also takes four teaspoons. Um, he takes the four teaspoons four times a day of the tonic. Uh, most take only half a teaspoon four times a day. He comes down every six months for a checkup. The tonic makes his nose run, but his nose always ran, so he doesn't care about that side effect because it's not one for him. <laughs> Um, because he was always that way. But, uh, and he was told he doesn't need to be on the tonic now, but he's scared to go off it, so he just keeps taking it. Uh, because he said there's Cancer no side stuff. effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they'll let you cross the border with only your driver's license, he said, into Mexico to get the treatment. Getting back might be a different problem No, he nowadays. said it's no problem. Well, I maybe, the, yeah, this was 2015, I don't know. That's before Trump. Yeah. So. So it might be different now, but he said um, it's much harder to cross into Canada than the Mexico, or at least at that time. Yeah. So anyway, that's my talk about 
those things. It's sobering. And it's certainly worth researching more about. Yep. There's uh, plenty of uh, food to mentally digest. Yeah. When it comes to cancer. Because it, it seems like a very different conditions. Uh, it might be one overall our overarching condition, but no. But, I mean, it's good to hear that the Hoxie tonic really seems to work, or like it might be the tonic and the other things that they do there, or whatever, I don't know. Um, and it looks like hope for cancer, people have a lot of success with that, and there are treatments, and it, that one I, I think is more expensive, quite a bit more expensive, but... Um, there's a lot of people out there that have the money and what's more expensive than your life when you've been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Pretty much to do some. Anyway, and and you know, it's um there's there is reason for some optimism. Like the Well even conventional stuff is treating cancer. Despite what they say. Yeah. They're, they're Oh no, some of these people have been really, um, uh, I guess, supportive or whatever uh, of uh, conventional treatments too. Just not all of them. Exactly right. And uh, there might be unconventional treatments that are better for certain people. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if I'd got my cancer about a generation earlier, I would have had long dead by now. You know, yeah. Like, I would have survived in well, and it looks uh, like, like, do you talk that to that woman that's, um, that went to Harvard? Remember the languages? She was homeschooled. I, I checked her stuff up, and, uh, and, uh, unless she's really, really unlucky, her stuff is, uh, yeah, really so. because, I mean, they've, um, that, what is that one that's, so she's still pursuing her studies, right? Okay, so, so she's doing okay. Uh, yeah, I think if it was really, really serious, uh, the doctors would put the kibosh in. And if she was really, really advanced, she would put the kibosh on. There's, herself. you know, if I had melanoma, I would not worry. Honestly, there's so many, like, people have tried. Um, James has run into somebody who treated his own cancer just putting zinc, zinc oxide cream on it. So how do we... Yeah. Put it on the back of his hand. You could see there was something there. Because there were scars hawking his hand. He had a lot of something, presumably skin cancer. And something cured it and it didn't look like surgery. So. Yeah, and it looks like this, uh, what is that? Rake beer. That looks like that's pretty promising for skin cancer. Maybe for all. But right now it's, um, they have an international treatment center, so even if you're, you don't have a lot of money or whatever, you can ask about that and you can be sent there. So, Impressive. Yeah. So, Probably um, certain types of cancer but are more it, uh, receptive, like with the well, they're only able topical to, application. That's they only have approval for skin cancer right now, for melanoma, but well, melanoma it looks like... Melanoma is a killer if it gets far enough. Like the, the interviews that they were doing with the people who worked um, developing the rig beer and stuff, it looks like the people who work with the stuff are just taking it. Yeah, because even though it's not, because um, it's just that effective, they, they trust it. So, anyway. I think we're going to head in. Yep. Got to catch up on my